Geometry Dash has a problem. What you are seeing right now is a level made two years ago by TMN Gaming that was put in the most recent gauntlet that was released a few hours ago. The message and idea of the level is how they hate how creating overtime became less about having fun doing it and more about the recognition and attention that came with it. The level looks brilliant. The only small issue with it is how the gameplay is a bit misbalanced for how long it is. What you're about to see is the result of doing that. The most toxic hateful comment section that I've seen for any level in the game. Garbage. Absolute garbage. Robtop, please delete this level. I honestly think a mindset change is needed. Constru As Daily Dose mentions here, and I'll also mention, this community treats anything other than the constructed norm of absolute perfection as shit that must be removed. Basically, if you aren't blee or blueski, you're fucked. Now, let me kick some of you off of this video that I don't need. I like Congregation, Crazy Man 50, and I think flow gameplay is one of the worst things to happen in Geometry Dash. Some of you just clicked off, and that's good. I don't need you here. Now, for the rest of you, I welcome you. This is not a normal gameplay tutorial, no. This is a Line 9 video. Today, I will be teaching you how to get better at gameplay creation, but in my own way. I will go over every game mode and how to be decent in constructing gameplay with it. But let me start from the beginning. Choosing a song is a massive part of level creation, and actually determines usually if the level will be finished. There are absolutely no restrictions though for your music taste, but I should mention that there are sometimes issues, like if you choose a song that is very hard to replicate in the emotion of a level, you may struggle to finish making a level. For example, I have a couple levels with songs that are a bit too ambitious for me personally to create a level with as efficiently as a different song that I could finish a level with. And this brings me to my other topic I want to bring up. Personality. Levels these days lack it so much, and to me it's a big part of building a level. So, choose a song that you resonate with and can match the emotion of in a level. The level I'm going to build today for this video will be using the final section of Rito Chip's tune titled Disassociating at a Christmas Party, which I will link in the description. I admire the song, and I want to bring out its potential in a level. Now, enough yapping, let's get started. Now, the rest of this video will be unscripted, so I'll yap a little bit more, but that's not the point. Let's just get into this. Um, and as you see, and as I mentioned, uh, we're using the song Disassociating a Christmas Party. And I'll just play a little snippet of the part that I'm going to start with, just so you can hear it. Alright, that's the part we're starting with. And I'm going to start with a cube, because that fits for this part, and I think most levels start with cube. But, um... Uh, just really sync is one of the more important things to me in building a cube part in a level So we can just start with a double spike because I have it set to 0.5 speed and um, Here I'm just we're gonna have it to start as a normal cube section But also I want to mention I have always in my levels. I have it saved as a custom object I have group one as invisible and group two as half visible, but uh, we don't need that yet so, so um, we can make this second jump spice up a little bit more. It's not just a second spike jump. I think we can go into some blocks, which will elevate us a bit. Okay, so um, there's a little piano change, I guess you could say here. So I can make that falling off of this block. I can make this another jump. Let's try it. Yeah, okay, I like that. Um, and I can make a blue pad here, go up here. So the, I haven't really said any like specific um, details, I guess. But one thing I want to mention is, uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, I hate flow gameplay so much. Uh, I have my own style, I guess. And what I try to do is I try to make defined, lengthy enough sections that can be distinguished from the rest of the level. And, like, when you want to mention a part of the level, you could just say the cube part at the beginning, and you, they would know what you mean. And so, for this, um, really, my style is I just try to mimic the sounds in the song with my level, and honestly, that's what anybody would do, yeah, so that doesn't make this that much different. However, uh, I really want to emphasize, like I said earlier, the emotion in a level, and the emotion in a song used in a level. So, um, really what that means here is just making the parts fit. And this part is slow because the song is also slow. Now, 
I'm going to cut for a bit, and I'm going to build a little bit more, and then you'll be able to see what I mean. So, I'll be right back. Welcome back. Um, I finished this cube section, and I'll run through it for you. Alright, so, um, I, as you can see with the ship portal, I changed the game mode as soon as the song switched from one small section to the next. Like, you can hear it change. Yeah, but, um, yeah, so for this section, you also might notice that there's not really much structuring at all. <laughs> and that's because, um, really what I'm just trying to show you right now is how to build gameplay. I'm not showing you how to build structures. But that is pretty important. But for me, I mean, usually what I can do is I, I usually like freely draw, like, structures with the block shape. And, like, I can just, it makes, it can make some cool stuff. Like, obviously, um, this is not what it's going to look like if it's decorated. But, um, for a layout, this can work perfectly fine. But, um, I could also switch it and make it, like, um, a dark block instead, and I, th I think that adds some nice contrast, but you can really make structures with whatever, whatever you want, but what the thing I want to say is you don't really need structures in a gameplay example. Like, if you're making a full layout that you're going to publish and have it be decorated immediately from there, then sure, it makes sense having some structures. But if you're just going to make some gameplay, you don't really need structures that much. So f I'm just going to preface, for the rest of this, I'm not going to be showing you how to build structures, but I might go into it eventually at, at a separate time if I if I really want to. But next, let's let's talk about the ship section. So um, when you when you're starting a ship section, you don't want to start with inputs immediately because players have very slow reaction times, even if they don't. If that makes sense, like people don't want to immediately do anything in a ship section. Like they have to get their bearings first, and uh, for, that's especially apparent for sight reading. So, for ship sections, these are probably one of the harder ones to build in terms of sync, in my opinion, because really the only things you can do are um, portals and portals of different types. That's wrong. You can use orbs in ship sections, and I think that's a massively untapped idea, I guess, because I never see many levels use orbs and ship sections because people think they can be too unpredictable for the destination, especially for a less difficult level, and I think that's wrong because you can shelter the player's destination enough for it to work, and I'll show you what I mean, so let's try it. Look, a blue orb fits perfectly here, and they will hit it. So obviously, uh, in the actual gameplay, I'm probably not going to hold. So let's let's um, let's just move on and see uh, like where it'll lead me. Okay, so um, I could probably place a portal here, like to uh, flip my gravity, so I can have a more varied area to go. So uh, this is the one part. Ship parts are the one parts where I think you do need structures. So, um, I guess it, you could just do the same thing as I did earlier, where you just trace, like, blocks, I guess, and just make them deadly. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, let's try it. Look, that works. So, um, it's really about just, again, matching the song. So, I think that first click matches an orb, this matches a portal. This would also match an orb if you really wanted it to. But, um, in ship parts, it's a bit less restrictive. You can do more, whatever you want. So, I'm gonna cut back and I'll show you guys when I'm done. Welcome back. Uh, I finished the ship section and I'll run through it for you. Now, um, this video hasn't been going for that long, but look, we've already made 20 seconds of gameplay. Some people, that's a feat, actually. Some people struggle to build gameplay, and that's completely fine. And that's why I'm making this video. I'm here to help you. So, um, it, it's really about making what you have fit the song more than just making as many inputs as once. 
And that's why a lot of people are always surprised that I can build gameplay at a pretty fast clip. And then again, that's just me. I've been in the game for six years in terms of building gameplay, so obviously I'm going to be pretty quick at it. But the point is, for anyone, it's going to be like, you're going to do it a lot faster when you're focusing on making it fit with personality and having it just go sync instead of me being a bunch of things happening at once. And what I mean by that is levels like anything, uh, how I circle pack the flow gameplay. Um, a bunch of things are happening at once, but you see it takes those people hours to build like 20 seconds of gameplay. You don't need all that. Like even for fast sections, like, uh, I'll show you something I mean. Here, let me exit out of this and I'm gonna go to another one of the levels I have. This is something I'm working on. Um, it's not done, but it's using um, a song I like. It's uh, Flumpty's Jam by DA Games. Uh, it's, a, it's a goofy song, I'm not gonna lie to you. But um, I made a section that's four times speed that it's like you can very easily tell what's going on. I'm just gonna put a star position here so and I'll just show you what I mean. It's it, You can still very much tell what's happening without it being like too slow even though it's fast anyway um that's enough of that but anyway the point is that was pretty fast and you could still it's not so cps heavy um and then we go back to this, so it always circles back. But next, I want to talk to you about making a ball section. So I think this part fits perfectly for a ball section. I'll sh listen, let you listen. This song's great. I love the atmosphere it builds. But the point is, look, you can immediately go in. Um, ball parts are one of the easier parts to build for me at least, because, I mean, obviously in 2.1 before, they were a lot more restrictive with um, how small they are, but I like to make ball parts free, free move, and um, let's let's look at what we can do. So, as you've seen actually me do, what I like to do is I like to go in and just click and see what works to sync with the song. So, um, for this part, I think I'm going to start with the uh, tunnel, and then you come out of the tunnel. Uh, I think the tunnel will end right here, and this is where you come out, and I think that would work perfectly for the start of this. Um, make these go up here so it looks a little bit more immersive, but um, yeah, obviously just put spikes to bracket you in, and yeah, um, I'll be back when I finish this section. Welcome back. Uh, finish the ball section and I'll show it to you. So, um, as you can see, one thing I really want to talk about is this right here. Um, I want to emphasize, as a lot of other gameplay creators and who have made tutorials on emphasize, uh, <laughs> don't make blind jumps or clicks. This could have been at warp. It could have been, but that would be really weird if you were sight this, because how would you know that you need to click there? Now, this one was almost the same issue, but um, I made it slightly bigger invisible like half invisible orb around it to show that it's there more clearly which is something you can do by the way um i don't really see it done that much but i've started doing it recently and i think it's a good strategy to make it clear that there's an orb there when it might otherwise start to become a blind click that one would not have been blind anyway but i just put that there just to make extra sure now um as you can see i used quite a bit of orbs it's especially blue ones when you wouldn't really think about using blue orbs in a ball section. But I think it really helps the flow and not having every gravity switch click be from a block because I think it adds a lot more variety to what you do to switch gravity. Same thing with the green orbs, but those don't really count because those work in any section, I think, to spice up gravity switches. But um, anyway, um, as you can see, I like using the open section version of the ball a lot because it allows me to do things like this and I can make fit the song better and again it always comes back to fitting the song because that's important 
So, next, I think this next area would fit for a robot section perfectly. Now, for a robot section, it's really the same as a cube section, except you have to think about the fact that um, you can hold and you have to make that work into your gameplay to make it feel more fun and original. So let's let's see how we can do that. So um, immediately here, we can see that we can make this jump. Uh, the fact that it's a da -da -da in the song, I think that can make it, tr it translate into a longer robot jump. So let's do that and it hits a pad and that flows. Look, that flows really well. And I think this click here would work for a blue orb because it, listening to the song, that sounded like it would fit. And just, yeah, um, it's a lot harder for it to come to you like that immediately when you're a beginner gameplay creator, but you just gotta think about things like that. Think about, hey, what would this jump fit for? What Would it be better for this jump to be long? What would it be better for this orb to be a blue one, a yellow one, or a red one? Or a, even a purple or a green one? I just don't use those ones as much because it's... I find less times where I think those would fit. But yeah, it always just comes down to this. Obviously I missed it then, so what I'll probably do here is I'll make another spike so it's harder to miss. Look, that was so easy. And we only did that in like a couple minutes. So I'll come back to you when I finish this section. Welcome back. Uh, I finished the robot section, let's take a look. Alright, um, so as you can see, um, it's, I think it flows quite well. And as you saw here, I also did the thing again where I made a larger orb behind, or in front of in this case, the other orb and made it half visible because uh, when I was building this, I felt like sometimes if you can hit this pad a certain way, it might send you off course and it'd be hard to hit this orb. So for situations like that, I'd say do this because it helps the player, like, more often be able to not have weird deaths like that. And um, if you've seen Colin's video on gameplay, um, you'll notice that I've used a lot of stop triggers and he always suggests that maybe that's not the best thing to do and I actually agree. So throughout the next couple sections, I'm gonna show you some ways to not use stop triggers and make you stop naturally. And, um, but the point is, um, I wanted to make a different version of the ship section to show you fast ship sections because building them is actually a bit different than building slow ship sections. So if we can just put a start position here and we can just go into it and see how we could make the gameplay work. Now just from hearing the song I think it would be good to make this free fly. So let's try it out. Okay so I think immediately that would be a good spot to have a gravity flip and I think it'd be cool to have a really big saw here. Now that obviously doesn't work for most sections in most levels but I think it would work pretty well here and what I would want to do is I would want to structure around this saw to make it look more natural like this is something that fits in and what I would want to have here is have something like that and then have some saws here probably move them down so it's a little bit less tight here and then put some more structuring to accommodate the destination of the ship based on where I want it to go. Now, we already have a bit of it done. Look at that. And what I do suggest is I do think that using orbs is a little bit more risky in um, fast ship sections because it can make it a little bit unneedably difficult, I'd say, because um, especially when sight reading, sometimes orbs in ship sections can not function the way you want them to because um, a function of a ship section orb can change so drastically just on how you hit it. So let's see what we've done so far. Okay, so I think we can change to a small ship here because that would just, I think that fits for this next section. Let's listen. And then I can think we would switch back to normal gravity here. So I'm going to build this section and I'll come back to you when I'm done. Welcome back. Let's take a look at what we got. Alright, 
So, um, as you can see for what we got, let me just place a blue portal here so this is correctly directed. Alright, anyway, um, so what we got here, um, I think this flows pretty well. I made the camera zoom out the, to 0 0.8 just so you can see a little better for this duration of this section. Let me save this. But, um... What I, I think what we got here, I think I, I think we got something nice because this flows pretty well in my opinion and just because this is a ship orb in general and it's fast, I'm going to make this one bigger like those other ones I did and make it half visible. Anyway, um, yeah, I think this flows pretty well as you just saw as well. And next, as you just saw here, I decided I'd make a swing copter section because this is going to be a challenge for me, especially to film because I'm not really that acquainted with making swing copter sections at all. But, the one thing I have noticed is that you have to make it really open if you want to make it at all fun to play and not, like, super difficult. Because, Swing Copter is something I feel like, I think right now, it's just like 1.9 where everyone sucked at Wave, but then it became really easy later. Because, um, for me at least, I've kind of struggled to make Swing Copter gameplay that can flow pretty well. But, I think, let's try it. Let's try it because we always have to try something. So, let's um, put the start position, and we can go from here. Um, and then also for Swing Copter, what I think is, let me make sure it's the right speed, yep. All right, and then Swing Copter also kinda has to be free fly because, like I said, with how much space you have to give Swing Copter to move and have it be comfortable, it kinda has to be open. So, let's try something. All right, so, the swim copter you have to make just pretty sparing clicks and make pretty much all orbs in swim copter make them big all right look that works pretty well so um for a swim copter you basically structure it the same way you would structure a ship section so um i could just continue to have basically this is the same i consider this the same section as a ship section because it's the same part of the drop so uh, it's not that different. So I'll probably structure it the same way. So what that means is having the same pretty like much I have uh, separated big structures that encapsulate where the gameplay happens with saws and in this case I have some big saws to spice up the way it looks and just give it some more atmosphere because I think having stuff like big saws can I think I, th I like big saws. It, uh, they it look cool and they make a section feel a lot more grand, I guess. Well, anyway, I'm gonna finish building the section and I'll get back to you. Welcome back. I finished the swing copter section. Let's see how it turned out. I think that turned out pretty well. Now, as you saw, I put stars in the areas where you should click, and unfortunately, sometimes like right here, um, it didn't really fully align with where I was actually going, and that's just because Swing Copter is so unpredictable and hard to build gameplay for, I guess. And that's what I mentioned at the beginning of building the section. But, would you look at that? We're already at a minute. We've already built an entire minute of gameplay, you and me. Now, um... This next section, I'm going to make it a UFO section. Uh, I was originally thinking about making a dual section because I think I thought that fit the song, but I want to get through every possible game mode that I can with you guys and show you how to build properly for it. So I decided I would save dual section for later, and I think this section still works as a UFO section because it was either this wave or spider, and... I think this section best fits for a UFO, so let's start. So, um, it's similar to this section, uh, you're going to want to put click indicators for a UFO section because for UFO sections, a lot of the time, um, you're, it's going to be hard for a sight reader to know how to where to click. So, um, when you're actually building gameplay, obviously you can just click wherever and you, you think would fit and build around that. So that's similarly what I've done for the rest of this. Really, what the way I build gameplay is, I start a section and I just click around and see where it leads me, and I build around that, and I think it works pretty well. So let's try it for the UFO. So what I think um, is, I think we could put 
like smaller inputs in between each like bump bump like because they have like little, little claps every time in between each clip so let's try that so uh we could try that so let's try it again here okay so i think that works but um they don't have it here uh, they do okay Okay, well, um, I think we could switch gravity here, because that's a, that's one of the biggest staples of a UFO section, I think. Okay, I think that works. Uh, put a dash orb here. Let's try it. Okay, so, um, I'm going to keep building this, and I'll go back to you. But anyway, uh, really, for any section like this, I consider um, swing copter, UFO, and ship to be quite similar and i the way i structure them reflects that my structuring on ufo sections ship sections and swing copter sections are virtually the same because i think it works quite well now you can take more liberties with a ufo section because it is a less smooth of a movement than ship or swing copter just in its very essence ufo is just different in that way so you could change it up. Like some people put like individual pillars and like have them have spikes, and I think that works fine. But um, for the for the for this level, what I'm gonna have it be is I'm gonna have it be um, similar to ship or swim copter. And yeah, I'll get back to you when I'm done. Welcome back. Let's see what we got. All right. So. Um, as you can see here, like I said earlier, I have a naturally ending dash orb here. Yay! We got one! Uh, I like to have a mix in my levels of, uh, manually stopped and automatically stopped dash orbs. And, um, this one is one of those. And I forgot to mention, I actually did one here as well. Um, but I tell you where to stop, but it doesn't stop for you. So, um, I didn't do that here. I might add X or continuity. But anyway, um... This UFO, UFO, UFO section is a little bit shorter, and that's okay, because this next section is going to be the spider section, which I think is uh, something a lot of people struggle to make good gameplay with, and this spider section is just going to be a transition, what's the word, I guess, it would be a transition section to the final area of the level, which is going to be a wave section. Uh, wave is actually probably the most difficult game mode for me personally to build with, so I think it's good that I'm making this because um, I bet I'm not the only person out there who struggles to build wave gameplay sometimes. So um, let's start with the spider gameplay though. So as you can see, I already play as a spider orb just as the first click, and I think a spider section is really the best spot to have a spider orb because it makes the most sense in that type of section because as you can see in the rest of the level i haven't used any other spider orbs and i think it's really just that it's hard to find a good spot to use a spider orb in my opinion but one section that always works i think is the spider section so let's try this first click all right so um i think this first click is not fit to be a spider move so i'm gonna make it an orb i think this is also an orb Okay, so I think these next couple clicks, though, will be spider clicks. Anyway, um, I'm not gonna uh, bore you with going into every single click, though, but um, I just want to mention again that for this section, this is also free mode. But um, anyway, I'll get back to you when I finish this section. Welcome back. Now, this section is not too complicated, so there's not that much to go over, but let's see. No, that's really not much more than was there before, even when I before I left to finish this section. But the point is, um, uh, the section, the structuring is similar to ball sections, I think. Um, but um, spider sections obviously are a little different because of how abrupt the movements are. Um, I put a black orb here to help shelter this click because it would be kind of easy to overshoot it and not have it sync that well. Uh, the second click doesn't really need it as much, but I think the uh, clicking into pads fits the song pretty well here. So this final section is going to be a, a wave section. Um, see, with wave, um, I really think that um, you should be able to switch between um, mini and non-mini uh, a little bit more sparingly than you'd think because 
mini wave is so abrupt in how it moves that I think it's really easy to make us a, a wave section feel uh, really uh, unintentionally unfun to play, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, so what I think uh, we should do is still have a lot, mini wave and normal wave, but be very careful how you use mini wave. So uh, we have the start position here. Um, we'll set the correct speed and let's try. Okay, so I maybe I should make this uh, immediately uh, input. So let's try again. Okay, so what I think could work here is uh, I think we could make this a dash orb because dash orbs are kind of sparingly used in wave parts and for good reason because a lot of the time they can be not done well. But um, the way I like to build wave sections is like have a lot more recently I enjoyed doing it more like having it only some of the ramps filled in and like I'll show you what I mean so um we fill this in and like only have it like this but that it's not just gonna be like this it's gonna be I'm gonna have it connected to some blocks and I think that looks kind of cool it looks kind of like um I, I haven't seen that many levels do this but I like how it looks and it also makes it a lot quicker to make wave sections because um, really you don't have to place every single ramp and obviously it's nice to have a wave session where you place every single ramp sometimes you need it but again it always depends on the song and in this specific section I think this fits better so I'll get back to you when I finish this section and welcome back and we finished the last section we've done it we built a level together now let's see this wave section All right, and that's the whole thing. And I mean, um, so as you saw, I added a zoom trigger because I think this section feels a lot better when it's zoomed all the way out. So anyway, that's an entire level we just did. We have each type of section one time. And now you know how to make a geometry judicial level in the style that I think fits best for this game and is the most personality dense and free a bit I guess because you have so much freedom when you stop thinking about standards and wanting to only be rated because I made a video about this months ago already talking about this but one of the biggest problems in the game is wanting to create only to be rated and not just to create and um and that's what I wanted to do with this video I wanted in this video I wanted to make a level just completely for fun and just because I love making levels and yeah I mean I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and um, yeah I'll now play a video of the entire level from start to finish